I'm Sean Arnold from Brave in the Attempt, sharing a previously recorded webinar. We're going to look at all the magical things you can do inside of Google Slides with a ton of examples. Hello everybody. Welcome. Happy Friday. We're going to get through some Google Slides sorcery, but I will be walking us through some standard basic stuff if that's where you're at, if that's what you need. So don't worry, don't stress. But on that note, um, try to keep your mics muted. Uh, if you got them when it comes time for audio questions, which I promise I will take in the end. My name is Sean Arnold. I work in the District 75 office. I've been teaching in District 75 for like 15-ish years. Started out as a music teacher. I used a lot of technology and all these other sorts of things with my students because I found how it could make things accessible to my students who struggled otherwise. And it made it both engaging, motivating, meaningful, and it was made for all my students who were English language learners, had m multiple uh, disabilities. Um, yeah, and so that's sort of my background story a little bit. The most important thing on here is this bit.ly link, which is that agenda. And beyond that, uh, let me say this. Creativity, right? How have you been created with your students in this situation? It's awesome. That's awesome that all that stuff's already happening. Thank you. Hey. Uh, how advanced are you? How, how quickly can I speed through the basics is basically what I'm wanting to say to you. All right, we have a range, we have a range. So I will definitely have fun stuff more towards the end for those of you who are advanced. You don't need to fall asleep though. I might hit on some things you're less familiar with, but I'll definitely take some of the basic stuff through in the beginning and make you aware of that. So we're going from zero to 60 in 60 minutes. Um, if you can keep up, again, this will be recorded and you go back. So for those of you who are beginners, as I start to move a little more quickly near the end, hey, it'll all be available to you. I'll actually even chop it up into short snippets and that'll be great. All right. So what is Google Drive, Google Docs? What is it made up of? Well, it's made up of a lot of things. Yes, we're focusingly heavy here in slides, but we can also link slides to all these other things. They live inside this drive. Uh, these all work together and collaboratively. If you're not familiar with all of them, sites, right? There's a place where you can make sites. Drawings lets us create even more elaborate drawings that we might put in our slides. Jamboard is like a whiteboard in and of itself where we might throw our slides into and we want our students to write over on top of. So there are lots of ways you can use these other apps in collaboration with it. But uh, let's get started. How do we make slide? And I've got those question marks there for you if you want to drag them to areas that are less familiar to you. How do we make a new one? Well, go to slides, create new presentation. It's that big plus button. Or you can do it directly from Drive. Click new and create Google Slides. Now, if you want it to be one your students are working in, inside of Google Classrooms, you can go to head and cre create a new assignment and make that assignment a slide deck. Now, this is going to be a blank one unless you go in and edit it, or you can attach one that was from your Drive. Here's what's cool that you might be less familiar with. You can go ahead and import former PowerPoints and things and turn them into Google Slides to add these sort of interactives. So just drag it straight into your drive, right click on it, and choose Open with Google Slides. Not too hard. Drag, right click, boom, right? If you have those already existing. I will dive a little further into this Explore button, which it seems some of you are less familiar with. Uh, it does let you access a whole bunch of festive features that you might not be familiar with otherwise. And then creating and arranging, I, okay, for those of you who are less familiar, this is literally just create a new slide. You'll hit this plus button, and I'll show it in a moment, uh, up at the top left, and it creates new slides. You decide what the layout of that particular slide is that you want. Of course, you can move them, you can drag them, you can duplicate them, you can delete them. All right, make it real easy. I got that taken care of, Greg. Muted myself. Thank you for letting me know, Ubis. Yeah, as I muted all with the noise, I muted myself too, unbeknownst to me, because I was doing it on a different screen. Thank you. And uh, as I said, I think you might be familiar with these basics. Comments I'll dig into when we get into collaboration. Uh, themes and layouts, I think you get about how to make it look pretty. I will show you how to change the background, but you can change the background layouts in the way that I have on these fun slides that you're looking at. Fonts and things I get, yes, some of you are less familiar with copy format, though. It is a real time saver. If you set up one set of text magically the way exactly that you want, and you don't want to have to go through and adjust the settings on all the other things on the other slides, copying the format is a nice quick way to do that. 
hyperlinks I think you get, but how you can use those, I'll show some fancy and interesting ways. Transitions, these aren't as advanced as um, how it works in say a PowerPoint or a keynote, there aren't as many options, but this is just going between slides, whereas animations are things moving on a slide. And then there's all the things that you can put on a slide, which I will dive into and more in bullets and lists, all right? But it seems like this is the one that actually is a really helpful tool that I'll show in a little bit that you're less familiar with. So let's go ahead and demo some of those basics. I'm going to drag this very basic looking slide deck over here. Again, I can go ahead and click up here and create any new slide in any style I want. You see, I've got several slides that I've already created. This doesn't look like the basic ones because there's this yellow thing at the top, which is way out of whack. But I'll show how to fix that. I can't drag it because it's already there. I can't move this little myself that I put in the corner. If you've ever seen people with slides that have those embedded things, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But I can just go ahead and edit text. Hello, welcome. And let me shrink this up so you might be able to see it better and zoom in a little bit as well so you can see a little better. This little button in the bottom right, you'll see it comes up is my explore button. Hmm, lets me search the web, but it also gives me suggestions based on what I was doing. Maybe I'd prefer my slide to look like this. Oh, that is nice. All right, let me search the web and look for a hello icon. Mm, let's go over to images. Oh, that looks nice. Let's go ahead and add that one. Oh, I clicked it twice. I'm just too impatient. And then I can go ahead and just resize that throw that little guy over here and it automatically links to the original photo file. Great, maybe that's what I want on my initial slide and I can go ahead and add more slides, add text boxes, great. Here's what I was showing you and talking about when I mentioned copying formatting. So this font's a little different here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that little paint format and then I'm gonna move over here. Actually, let's go to a different one because I don't wanna mess that one up and paste it here. There you go. And that's a nice, easy way to copy my formats. But let's say it's something that I want as a format throughout my whole page. And I want to create really nice looking slides, sort of like this. All this is, is a bunch of shapes that I've inserted in different places, typed on them, changed the fonts. But let's say I want this to look like most of my slides. So I'm going to go ahead and actually copy and paste this whole thing and go up to a place up here, slide and edit master. Now this is what takes me to this place where I can mess around with all those backgrounds and change things. So let's go up here. Let's move this around and actually make it fit properly. Maybe I'm super conceited and I want my face in the corner to be like that. I'm, I'm not, I'm just as a joke. Let's go ahead and put this in here too. And maybe I want that. I'm gonna right click and change the order. Send it to the back. Not bad. something like that. And when I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my slides and I'll see that's updated across them. Not bad, not bad. I can even go ahead and add fun things like pictures and images that I found on the web that you saw. These are that commentary on the side. We'll dive a little more into that, but uh, let's get into a little bit of those creation tools. So let me give you an overview first. Um, when you're getting creative, there are several things you can add. Yes, I showed you grabbing pictures from the web, but there's lots of other ways you can grab pictures too, from your Google Drive, from your Google Photos, from your built-in camera on your device. Uh, you can even add audio. Now it doesn't, like on a PowerPoint, let you record the audio on the slide. It has to be pre-recorded somewhere else. I did link in the agenda some places where you can go online to do recordings, or you can just do it in your computer on like QuickTime or Windows Movie Maker or something, and uh, go ahead and add that in. All right. Now I'm gonna do the mute all again. So. Try to keep your mics muted if you can. Text box, okay, like I showed you, and you can take it anywhere you want on the screen. It doesn't work like a regular document. You have the freedom to put those text boxes everywhere. 
Video, yes, it can be from YouTube, but it can also be from your drive itself. So if you've created your own screen recordings and videos that you want to embed, just drag them into your Google Drive. You don't have to have them public on YouTube and you can just insert that link there. And then as I showed you, yes, you can create shapes, but you can do a lot of fun, interesting things with those shapes that I'll get into. And then there's all the charts and diagrams and tables uh, that it seems that's where most of you are unfamiliar and I'll dive into that too. I'll show the audio as well for those of you who noted that. Now, when we're adjusting images that we've put into it, and that's say we put in the picture, whether it was the one we took, we, get, we can edit it in lots of ways. And I'll show you some ways to make it look a little more professional so it doesn't look like you just slapped on a picture from the web. Yes, you can draw your own shapes from scratch. So these types of cool shapes and things, um, you're not gonna find those sort of icons existing already in the Googles. Uh, you can go ahead and align them. What's in the front? What's on the top? What's in the back? You can actually even have it sorted if you've never gotten all your stuff aligned properly and the way these are in a perfectly lovely line. Uh, there are ways to do that too. I'll show you that. Um, if you want to crop it and change it, but not just like cut off with slightly edges, you can crop it in cool shapes as well as formatting, colorizing it, making it look even prettier. And beyond that look, you can go ahead and add in, of course, those hyperlinks, which are going to be awesome. But the hyperlinks don't just go to uh, websites and things. You can hyperlink to other pages in your slide deck or other documents in your drive, which creates a lot of possibilities I'll be showing later. And then we can even add those sorts of transitions and animations, which get a little more interesting and exciting, stuff like that. Again, transitions are between slides, animations are on an individual slide. I'll show all these in a moment. And then there's that editing the master to make it look the way you want, as I already showed you. Let's get into some of those creative steps, though. Let's start with inserting some objects. I'm just going to go to a whole brand new uh, blank slide like this. I'm going to go up to insert. And you can see I can throw in some more text boxes. I just drag and drop and write what I want. And I can still move it around and change it and resize it. Let's go ahead and add an image. I showed you how you can search from a, the web on the side, but you can search from it here. But let's go ahead and just take a photo. And am I looking camera ready? Let's find out. Probably not. Hey. Take that photo. Insert it. E spooky. I should have probably been looking at the camera. I don't like the way that image looks. Let's make it look a little better. I'm going to head up here to crop. And I'm going to, hmm, what would look exciting for me? Let's do, ah, eh, let's just do a simple, actually, no, let's do it like this. And, all right, but my face isn't in the middle of it. So I can adjust that crop. I double click. Let's go ahead and drag my face over a little bit. Make it a little bigger so it fills in. Eh, not terrible. And now I've got an explosion face. That might be interesting. Let's go ahead and right click on this image. And I want to go ahead and rotate it a little bit. Make myself look weird on my side. Let's resize it a little. It's going to squish my head up if I do it this way, though, because I'm not cropping. I'm resizing. So if I stretch my head out. All right. Maybe I want to go ahead and... Oops, where is it at? Let me write. Oh, that's a shape. I got to add an image again now. Format options. Here we go. So let's say I can't perfectly align this and I want to make it exactly the right size. I can go over here and adjust it perfectly. And maybe I want to rotate it to exactly 57 degrees instead and change its position on where it is on the slide. So if you ever have been trying to drag these things around and you're like, I can't get it quite exactly where I want it, you can adjust it exactly here. You can type it in, put it exactly where you want. You can even recolor this so maybe it matches my background a little bit like that. I don't know why I'd want to do that. Maybe I want to make it a little transparent. All right, maybe I even want to add some shadows and some reflections. Those are all places you can get to by right-clicking and choosing format options. 
let's go ahead and add in a few of those and I'm just copying and pasting. You can do that in edit or use hotkeys. So if you'll notice all these things that say options and stuff, if you hit those keys, it's just a quicker way to do it. Uh, before I do that, actually, what I want to do now is arrange them properly. Let's go ahead and hit arrange and I can go ahead and align these. So maybe I want to line them out across the middle like that. Oh, not bad. Or maybe I also want to uh, align them. Actually, let's go ahead and distribute them vertically like that. Maybe I just want them randomly spaced. So you can go ahead and easily set those up across multiple objects by grabbing them and have them align. Maybe this is something when I start working on it, I want them to all go together. So I can grab them all. I can group them. Let's add one more picture here from the side with that explore key. Let's add a fish because this is why I wanted to look like I was underwater. I'm going to be in a fish tank in the background. There's my fish, although that's not a great looking fish. It just looks like a giant thing on my screen. Let's make it a sort of oval shape like that. Okay. Oh, but you know what? I want it to be in front of the fish. Okay, so I right click, I go ahead and change my order, bring me to the front. So that's how I can edit and manipulate those objects. Let's add something else. Let's add some shapes. Let's add one of these. But you know what, that really should be red, but not even just red. Let's make it a gradient red, something cool like that with some very thick lines on the outside. So it's kind of like Ghostbusters. This is exactly what you don't want to do on a slide because it's a big old mess. That's why I want that there. And even more than that, let's go ahead and draw on it. So I have all these other options, polygon lines, even scribbling. So I can draw here and make all my own pictures. Do you want to build a snowman? No, that doesn't quite look like a snowman. Even more so, beyond those other shapes and lines, I can insert videos. All right, so I can search for them on YouTube. Fish tank. It should be two words, but whatever. And slowly the internet asks us whether we want to see that. As that loads, maybe I should look for one of my... Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, that's why. It's loading like three hours of beautiful coral reef fish. There it is, three hours of coral reef fish. Now, you'll see this appears on the side because it's already showing what I showed. Those are just the format options for videos. This is the neat trick and something I was showing another teacher yesterday uh, when they published their slides to the web for students to view, they wanted it to play automatically. So all you're gonna do is hit that button. You can even mute the audio, change all those sizes and shadows. Here's a neat part, this is a three hour long video. I don't wanna watch that whole thing. Maybe I just want to do the first about 30 seconds worth of it. So I'm going to play from 15 seconds to, oh, that's 45 minutes, not 45 seconds. There you go. So now it only plays those 30 seconds of videos, and I'm not going to make you watch fish for 30 seconds. But that's all the sorts of fun adjustments you can do even to a video. You can even... Uh, shift where this appears in the background too. So if you want it behind objects in the beginning and it to move and come forward when it auto plays, you can do that as well. Uh, you will see a piece here though for alt text on videos and images. And I wanna draw that to your attention now. If you're not familiar, alt text is what uh, makes uh, images and, and things uh, readable to screen readers for people who are visually impaired. So if you wanna make your slide decks accessible to all sorts of users, make sure you're adding that alt text in, all right? And beyond adding those videos that I might wanna to bring to the front, I can animate all of these pictures and videos. So if I go ahead and click on one of these objects, you'll see this animate button appears here. It doesn't give me a ton of options, fading in, flying out, from the right or left? Do I want to do it when I click or after the previous thing? It even, one of the animations for the video, do you want the video to come in? Uh, let's go ahead. Or do you just want it to play? 
You'll also see this thing that says slide transition. Now you can get to there from animations or just by clicking on a slide, right clicking on it and finding transition. That's how you move from one slide to the next. Again, there aren't a ton of options, but maybe you want it to turn like a cube or just dissolve into the next slide. And if you want to view how those look, I'll show you a few later. You just hit play just so it doesn't mess with your screens right now. I'm not going to hit that yet, and I'll let you see a few animations a little later on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the other one thing that you can add that I haven't shown you yet is audio. Let's make a real mess of this slide. And I'm going to look in my drive for some audio I have there. Oh, here we go. This is me reading certain chapters of books. So if I want to show a page of that chapter and then have it read that automatically, of course, these are long chapters. So this is like a 36 minute chapter. But you can add audio that's already existing in your drive. Just drag it into your drive. All right. You can also further insert word art. Actually, let's get to a blank one so it's a little clear what the word art looks like. And I will say the magic of word art lets you do things in uh, other places too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type uh, welcome to, and I want this on a different line, so I'm gonna hit shift, enter, slides. Uh, not too exciting, but I can resize this, reshape it. Okay, let's change that font up. Let's do something like Engelbert. Actually, that's not even fancy enough for me. Let's do that one, <clears throat> good. Let's change it to a gradient like, oh, that's gonna be hard to see on this one. Let's make it this one instead. And let's change those outlines like that and add a little drop shadow and make it a uh, farther away drop shadow uh, like that. There we go. So you can make your titles and things look really fancy if you want with the word art. And then maybe while you're welcoming to slides, you're gonna give people data on how awesome slides is. Again, you can insert all these sorts of charts. If you've already made the info from sheets <clears throat> tables, I think you get uh, sorting something out nice and neat on a slide. You can actually even insert pictures inside of those. So if I were to grab this one here and go back to where that was. Oops, didn't go in there. Well, I'm just gonna resize it for now. But generally you can copy and paste it inside of there. Now it's just because I came from another slide and it's just doing it again. All right, so some things don't wanna work on me today and that's okay. Then diagrams is a sort of different one. Let me go to another page to show a diagram. Diagrams look like these. They have all these sorts of charts. If you're doing timelines and fun stuff like that on your slide deck, don't feel like you have to build all these shapes of it from scratch, okay? Just go ahead and put that in and adjust it. And you can adjust all those colors and things as well on all the shapes. So if I decided I liked that as red instead, I can. But again, that is not you dragging it from scratch. This is a way to add a lot of excitement and interest to your level of slides. There's tons of types in here uh, from timelines to cycles. Uh, like for example, when I've done a frog life cycle, I'll just go ahead and pop one of these in and throw on a picture of a frog and give in that information. And it's already made for me. Now beyond inserting those, I showed you how you could crop. I do want to show you how you can turn some of this text here into hyperlinks. And since I pasted everything on top of itself, let's do it here. Two fractions. I can either right click and just choose link, that command K, and you'll see, oh, it suggests a website, a fractions calculator, or it accept, uh, it, it shows options for other uh, documents I've created that might be similar. Or for other interesting thing, I could link to other slides in this presentation. So when a student clicks on that, maybe I want them to take, it, take them to a whole nother slide about fractions right there. Of course, it's impossible to see because I made the colors all matchy matchy and that's no good. So let's just make that a horrible, horrible red for now. So when I click on it, it's live, it'll take me over to that other page. Cool. So that's a lot of the ways you can make your slides a little more interesting, a little more interactive, and a little more visually compelling for your presentations, for the work you're doing with your students. But creativity is but one piece. We also want to be collaborative. So that gets us to the place of comments and replies. 
this is how we communicate while we're working on a document. This isn't text I'm putting on it. This is out on the side asking somebody to add something or edit something. I can also share it out with other people. Just click the share button, show the level of access. I'll show exactly how that works in a moment. Of course, we can print it. We can email it. Uh, you decide on the value of that. Eh, not great for me. But you can also download it. Now, downloading it, as well as downloading it for email, uh, you can change the formats. So if you want it all as images and JPEGs, or you want it as a PDF, awesome. You can do that and download it directly that way. So let's do a little bit of collaboration. And here's that really annoying, boring, messy, messy document. Let's go ahead and just hit that share button. Now I've got it set to anyone with the link can view it, but that's not the default. What the default would be is it's actually restricted to my organization. So if you're sharing something uh, in the at schools domain or inside your own school domain, and you want it to go to a broader audience or to parents who are using their Gmails to log in, well, make sure when you hit share, you go here, click on more, and allow anyone with the link. Now that's not gonna let them mess it up. You see, right now I've got it just set so they can view it. Doesn't mean they can edit, doesn't mean they can even comment on it. They're just viewing it. You can go ahead and edit those as well. If I wanna add somebody to help me out here, and I'll add Amanda to this as well. And there she goes, but Greg's already a part. Now what level of access do I want her to have? Well, because it's got that pencil, it automatically lets her edit. But maybe I just want her to be able to comment. So she's only able to comment. Let me know what you think. think. She's actually gonna get this email. I don't want her to think this is my real slide deck. There we go. Yeah, sure, why not? That's how you can share it. That's how they can collaborate on these documents. Not terribly exciting, except when they're finally in there, hmm. Greg, we're doing a fraction equivalence unit. Can we use something other than pizza? I'm asking Greg. Now I added that plus symbol. How, how did I get there? Well, I simply click on a thing. I can right click and you'll see there's a comment button. Right click on a picture, a uh, comment button. That comment button also lives up here. But let's say I also have a comment about this and I wanna say, which unit is this? And maybe I want to get Greg's attention again. So I plus him. And there is the comments that I get back from Greg. If I think we fix this one and I don't want to do chocolate bars. Oh, tell me it seems like third grade, right? Bower by country flag. I can go ahead and resolve these and say it's all fixed, but I'm going to leave them there for now. And that's how I can get comments from all people. All that other stuff about downloading it and other things are here in the uh, files area. There is one other cool thing I'm gonna show you here though when we're ready to present. It's called publishing to the web. But that's how we can collaborate and work together on our documents. I'm not gonna get into all the parts of it, uh, which is more in a docs thing that I've shared, but I will show you one thing over here that allows for version history, which lets me see all the weird edits other people have made. Of course, I've been the only one working on this. Nobody else has. But if they were here, it would show their other colors. If you want to see more about that, you can look at the video of the HyperDocs session that I did. Uh, and it lets you know what those edits were. And you can even revert back to old versions just by right clicking. All right. So I'm going to head back out. I'm going to head back into my slide deck. When it's time for you to share your slides. Well, of course we can present and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment regularly. I'm of course presenting through Pear Deck, which is a slightly different phenomenon, but uh, Google Slides presentations offers several things. It gives you notes to see while you're presenting a whole presenter screen and speaker view, as well as uh, questions and captions that are available beyond what you're presenting to the web. Now I'm gonna share my broader screen so you can see all these other pieces as I present, so as I stop sharing this screen, don't think that that's not on purpose. It is because I want to share my whole screen so you can see it. Let's go back to this terrible, terrible, ooh, well, I went completely out of it. Slides basics, there we go. To go ahead and present, well, it's obviously this big present button 
on the top right hand side. When it's ready for me, I'll click on it. But this is also where I can see certain analytics and link to all these comments in my document too and the whole comment history and see who's been working. All right, let's go ahead. I can just click present, but I wanna click on something that shows presenter view. So you'll get to see this magical piece right here. Now this lets me jump between my slides. I can find them by name and jump between it. So if I really wanted to jump ahead to that fraction slide, I could. If I wanted to go ahead and add some notes here, or here's a nice button, audience tools. Let's go ahead and start that and you'll see what's available. It actually lets me accept questions using this link right here, which I will, oops, pull that back up and copy that link address. And I'm gonna paste that very quickly in the chat. And you will see, if you ask me questions, if we're doing a live session, those questions would begin appearing here. And I could go ahead and respond to them in real time. Maybe this is off, I'm on a separate screen that you couldn't see. And I could respond And as I'm going through my slides. Of course, this is a really annoying one. We're not gonna make you watch that fish video. But while you're asking those questions, I wanna point out a couple of other things, like a pointer. Point out the pointer that exists inside of here. But there's also, here are my notes if I need them on that other screen. Here is my Q&A if I need to pop it up again. And here is closed captioning. So I can go ahead and turn that on. So that way, if I have uh, multilingual learners who need other text, if I have people who are struggling to hear, if I have hearing impaired students, well, there we go. That's making it much more accessible for them. Obviously, I'm presenting through Teams and Teams has its own captions, so that might not be necessary, as well as does Google Meet. But that option is also available there for you. Before I head out of there, did anybody ask me a question? No, and that's fine. You can just put it in the regular chat and I'll go peek over there. Closed captions, auto translation. Nope, not in Google Slides. You want PowerPoint for that. And it is a really awesome feature that exists inside of Microsoft PowerPoint. And I will say that yes, the, this is a slide sorcery. A lot of the same things can be done in PowerPoint. Not all of them, but uh, I have, though I was not a PowerPointy kind of person, have started to move over to it and for certain things specifically because of features like that and because of built-in accessibility features on it as well. So if you're a custom PowerPoint, yes, you can import your PowerPoints into slides and change them around. Of course, things like Pear Deck don't necessarily work with PowerPoint as well. Though they do work a little bit, it's a little glitchier. So that's how we present. Now let me take you through some of the sorcery, okay? This is where the magic happens, as they say. Step one of sorcery is we're gonna show you some writing templates. Now you're seeing an example on your screen of a fairly simplistic one with the polar bear that has a place for students to learn about polar bears and put in their own facts and photos. So that one looks a bit like this if you're not in the pear deck. All right, they eat seals, we watch that. The students can go ahead and drag and drop polar bears live in the lakes. No, Arctic Ocean maybe? Hmm, that seems about right. I can find a photo photo and insert it in. Maybe we're just gonna use that one because this is a simple interactive for students. And you know what, when I actually give it out to students, what I'm gonna wanna do is not have it live here in slides. I'm going to want to, and let's undo both of those really quickly, publish it to the web, which is the other way of presenting that I want to show you now. It just creates a finalized link and you can change these settings for your slides. Let's hit published. Yes, I do. And here is my link. Now, it's got a number at the end, 3,000. All that number means is how long it's gonna take in between slides. And since I'm sharing my whole screen, I'm actually gonna go into an incognito window. And for those of you who had trouble filling in the survey, hey, do it in an incognito window, and then you can log into your DOE account. It's also what lets you be in a student account and a teacher account simultaneously. And so see, this works for the students, and these links automatically work because they're embedded in for the students. And that way, they're not messing around with the original slides, but they do have access to it live on the web. And that number that I shared at the end is how long between each slide. So if I made it smaller to 250, that would be like a quarter of a second. If I made it like 90,000, that would be like a minute and a half. 
don't check the math on any of that. All right, but that's how that works. Okay, so we got an interesting one on bears. You can do lots of other though visual ones for your students. Here's one that's a writing journal that I've shared out with you with a bunch of sort of topics where students can just put in what's going on with them and their experience here in remote learning because we wanna connect socially, emotionally, have that mindfulness piece. There it is, a nice fun writing journal for them. Or maybe you're pushing something out and you wanna do a newsletter. A, uh, a, a slide deck is actually a really nice way to do it. And you're like, wait, that's not shaped like slides. Oh, that's because all I did was I went to file, page setup, and I just adjusted the size to that of a regular size piece of paper. So this could actually be a printable one if I'm not sticking videos and hyperlinks and stuff in here. You know, but if you are, obviously printable isn't going to be awesome. If you don't want it to live here and you're not going to publish it to the web, is the way I showed you before, you can also just download it as a PDF and send it out and email it to people as well. And therein goes your uh, school's remote learning review. Okay, so let's head on to the next piece of demo sorcery. We're going to do some collaborative slides. Now, this is that piece. Again, there are lots of software that do it. Pear Deck, Nearpod, which integrate with Google Slides, um, Smart Learning Suite, which integrates with G Suite. But those can get a little complicated. You're looking at this measurement one. One simple interactive is just so that, uh, that we're collaborating, excuse me, is simply to create those hyperlinks to places in your slide. So I simply set up my first slide with all the terms, and then the students went and put in their names. Not real students, obviously. Uh, next to the one that they wanted to do. Now you could assign them, or if you want, students can select it. So when I know it's time and Tina has to define what an inch is, takes her to that page, she puts in a picture, she writes my definition, she writes a sentence, as opposed to the blank ones that were set up that simply had sentence definition and this space for the image that they dragged in. And that way I can just assign one. When you do it in Google Classroom, you'll simply <clears throat> assign it as a shared edited document, not as a copy for each student, all right? They'll simply do it all in that one page. It's also nice and fun and easy to grade. And also adds to the interactive piece. It can be done for much broader things. Here we are learning a lesson on fractions. I assigned these to specific students. And then they can go ahead and go to their page. Uh, the way it works, again, let's go ahead and remove that hyperlink. Uh, oops. Like that. I simply select it like I showed you before, link it, and I choose hmm, which page in this presentation uh, we wanted to go to Malcolm's page. Yes, actually that's not the right Malcolm page. This is, Malcolm, this is the Malcolm page. There we go. And so when I click on it, here we go. Malcolm can start doing his work. Not too hard. All right, that's a sort of collaborative uh, use of slides here now is a manipulative use of slides. So let's go ahead inside of this version of slides. I have a build a zombie. Let's get rid of that one that I put on here. Space for students to write about it. They can choose different sorts of things. I already put wings on this one, but whatever. Let's go ahead and find some hats. I wanna get a hat for my zombie and let's go ahead and give him a sombrero. Cinco de Mayo is coming up. Let's go ahead and rotate that a touch. He's going to wear it askew, kind of like that. And simply having students go ahead and move and edit and create and write about their creation. Obviously, this can be used for all sorts of things. Uh, one example, though, is not where students are creating, but they're demonstrating their learning. So I've got this set up. They have to sort this out. So let's say this is one fish. This is one and red, and this is red fish, right? Or more complex, maybe we've got three circles and they're sorting in between all the spaces. Or they're already pre-sorted and it's up to the students to figure out what the groups are and type that in. So this is, hmm, it looks like two and green, or this might just be green. This looks like 
just one fish, and this is one. Oh, okay, yeah, so this is probably one, and this is probably green. And the student susses that out. So it can be used for, for uh, demonstrating their understanding in that capacity as well. For those, I would make a copy for each student. Let's go to next level magic, digital stories. I'm going to show you a few versions of this. The one you're seeing in the uh, Pear Deck is a simple one, which is, hey, this is a choose your own adventure story. Let's go ahead. And again, this I would publish to the web just for the student to get through. But this is one where the students are creating their own. Hmm, Michael asked his sister for her password. Should he give it to her? Hmm, let's go ahead. No. Oh, no. What happens next? Stay tuned for the exciting ending. All right. It could get a lot more advanced and visually compelling. All these are using our hyperlinks. Each of these choices link to a different place in the document. And all I have to do is select that piece, hyperlink it, and when we click on it, it takes us to that area of the pathway. And you see this is a much more complex story with many more choices. All right, what about a comic book? Well, let me go ahead and present this one because that's how a comic book is supposed to work. This is using certain animations to make it come alive like a comic. Here we go. Oh, look. Hi, I'm Barty. I'm a monster. Today I celebrate my 437th birthday. It's also my boss's birthday today. Uh, she's not that old nearly. <laughs> I hope my friends can make it to my birthday party. It's hard. We're all staying indoors, but let's see. Oh, of course I'll fly in. And then all the rest pop in. I sped that up. I'll slide by. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I guess if I have to. What comes next in the story? We know you don't need more snakes. Yeah, it looks like he has enough. Hmm. What did they get him? <gasps> oh, yay! We got you the dragon you wanted. And then in the middle of the story, it takes us to some uh, discovery activities. Where I sped through that one, too, where we learn how to spell dragon. Happiness is having a pet dragon. I agree. Pet dragons are awesome. Hagrid wanted one. All right. Oops, I already showed this story. Here's another uh, example of a choose-your-own-adventure story, but you get the gist of that. That just has much more compelling images. Now, this one I'm going to play, and I'm actually going to take off my headphones when I do it, because as you can see, I added in an audio component to this story. So this lets students create a digital story where they get to record their own voices. This is my quarantine story. This is a true I've story this place before. from uh, I've gone through times in my life where people I of New York. This much fear, and I ended up coming out the other side. When I lost my job, when my husband left me, I survived those things. So I try to remind myself of that, but it's been a lot of stress. Cheese puffs for breakfast, beer for lunch, same pajamas for three days. Yesterday, my four-year-old told me that I looked like a pickle. So it's been a lot, but my main fear is this. What would happen to my kids? I'm a single mother of three, and I'm high risk because I have a rare lung disease. I haven't been vocal about it, so not many people know. But those who do have taken such good care of me. Nobody's made me feel needy. So days I'll open my door and there's notes or cards or activities for my kids. One anonymous person left a bottle of hand sanitizer with a note that said, the world needs you. Last week, we decided to return the favor. We put my daughter Zoe's finger paintings in all our neighbor's mailboxes. We called it the Quarantine Art Club. And yesterday, we got a package on our doorstep. Our neighbor down the block had added all these beautiful drawings to Zoe's painting. He signed it, a Zoe and Carl production. So his name must be Carl. So, his girlfriend's name is Lauren. She had a bag of cookies. That's all I know about them. We've never even met. They were by the house yesterday and they waved out their car window and they said, Is that Zoe? It was so much fun. I couldn't get close, so I just kept blowing them kisses from the porch. So that's an actual story of a New York mom who is high risk, but she's meeting her neighbors for the first time. Uh, Nice and powerful story. And students can tell their own this way. 
uh, simple voice recordings, and a slide deck. All right. Let's get into the next era of magic. Let's go ahead and show some interactive slides. Now, this interaction is created with a few pieces of magic. Um, this is students demonstrating that they understand, and I'm going to publish this. Oops. I'm going to publish this one to the web uh, so we can see it a little better. Now, this particular one studies the different planets. And as students click on them, they'll learn a little bit more information. Oops. That's all I want. Just this. All right. And they'll get to see for each one. So here's how it works. All right, let's go ahead. Hmm, let, what planet is this? Oh, Earth. Okay, what about this one? Oh, Mercury. All right, uh, what about that? Oh, Jupiter. Sun, okay. How does that all work? What I've done is there's a slide for each planet. We can write information on each. This one I'm sharing with you. And on top of each of these, is a hidden shape. I just made circles. I just went and created a circle. But then I went and changed the transparency of it uh, with my formatting options. So that way the circle, uh, oops, was, was uh, invisible. So we basically go ahead, transparent, and transparent, there's an invisible. And then you can create that hyperlink on it. And then I just copy and paste it to all of my slides. And every single slide, no matter which one you will, you're on, will automatically link you to each object. So that one, yes, will take me to the Mars slides, which I'm already on. Let's go ahead and click it. Yeah, there you go. We're about Mars. And that's how you can do something like that. And I've used it not just for planets, but students finding places on their face, body parts, all sorts of object identification. It's just a fun uh, interactive that students can partake in. Now let's get to, oh, you know what I didn't do? And I gotta show these. This is another type of interactive before I get to the animation. Let me show these, because these are the most fun interactives. So we're gonna quickly play, hey, I'll let you vote real quickly in the chat. Uh, do you want to do Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or Jeopardy? Hmm. Millionaire? Millionaire it is. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? It was the first one I saw. I saw. I go whoever's first. I know a few people put Jeopardy. We're doing Millionaire. Maybe we'll have time for both. We'll see. We'll do it quickly. So I'm going to start this lesson in Pear Deck. I already had that add-on. You get to add-ons by clicking it. I'm going to make it an instructor paste activity. I'm going to get that Pear Deck link. Now, this might be difficult for you to join a second Pear Deck. Uh, feel, don't feel like you have to. But if you're able to, they're fine. Or maybe I'll just have you type your answers in the chat. Uh, here is that second Pear Deck link, though. If you want to pop in there, I know. It's super meta. All right. Pear Deck inside of a Pear Deck as we go. But I'm going to click here to begin, and feel free to just type the answers in the chat if you want as well. So despite the fact that the indigenous residents had already named it Rapa Nui, what name did a Dutch explorer give to the remote Pacific island he came across on Easter Day in 1722? If you've attended any of these sessions before, maybe you already know the answer and you're getting it. Type it in the chat. All right, I see some answers. It seems like you guys know it. All right, let's go ahead. Yes, it is Easter Island. $100 first to David Byrne. Good job, you're first. Let's go to the next question. Which talk show host already hosted the reboot of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, which debuted last Wednesday? Ooh. Oh, people are already responding. I see some. Now, here, here, let me show some of these responses on here. What does the audience say? And Jimmy Kimmel it is. Jimmy Kimmel. All right. Good job. All right, we're going we're gonna to skip ahead to the million-dollar question for the sake of time. A 93-year-old woman in Pennsylvania has gone viral with a request that might seem more appropriate for a college boy. What is she requesting? Condoms, pizza, beer, or toilet paper? All right, here come my responses. And most of you think beer. I don't know what your needs are. It is a Friday, and you are correct. One million dollars. 
That must feel great. Uh, I promise you'll get it in the mail. Sure. <laughs> and... That's really loud. I'm going to stop that. Oops. I accidentally clicked the so sorry button. And now it's blasting in my ears. This one, for the sake of time, I'll do the, uh, uh, what is it? The Jeopardy really, really quickly. But all these are, are a series of hyperlinks on a page. Uh, let's go ahead. Science Sense for 100. This scientific tool makes small things look larger. What is it? And what answers do I see? I don't see what, oh, let me scroll up. All right, well, those are all good answers, but none of you formed it in the form of a question. I was looking for microscope. I see it there, but what is a magma? Oh, there you go. There you go. All right, let's go back to the Jeopardy board. There we go. Let's go ahead to tallest, fastest, largest, maybe 200. The tallest living thing in the world. You can see one in the state of Washington. What is it? Tallest living thing. Living being our key word. Make sure to form it in the phrase of a question because <laughs> I'm a real stickler. <laughs> what is, okay, well, that's not very specific, but you need to be more specific, but that's fine. We'll take it. It's a redwood tree, giant redwood trees. <laughs> All right, some of you are, are being specific in a different regard. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and head to Final Jeopardy. Final Jeopardy question. The topic is quarantine. How many pounds of toilet paper does the average American use per year? And Sandra and Nina, thank you for correct responses on the last one. What? What? Just pick a number. What is 10? Too many. 20 roll. All right. Let's see. Nobody's got it right yet. Nobody's even that close to the neighborhood, honestly. 50 pounds in the U.S. Internationally, about 100 rolls. So 50 pounds of toilet paper per year. Craziness. Let's go to the last piece of sorcery. For those of you who have been sticking with me, it is an animation. It is me being animated. We're going to present it. Of course, you would publish this to the web. But let's just go through. I got some funky dance move. Of course, I got a dab. Let's floor slide. And all it is, this is a very simple animation because all I'm doing is copying and pasting. I didn't even add the animation, which you can do on slides, but I'm just moving myself slightly on each slide, adding some fun glow and effects up at the top that are copied and pasted in there. Looks like I'm dancing, which is what I feel like doing in my seat. And ultimately, there are a ton of add-ons. Pear Deck, feel free to look at those uh, recordings and of sessions we've done. There's some, tons of cool add-ons for images. I've linked those in the agenda. Cool add-ons for icons and things like these and a way to turn your slide deck into GIFs. If you're ready for the next steps, there's lots of stuff to do. We had a keg meetup last week. We'll probably have another one next month. I'm working on a Microsoft meetup perhaps in the coming week. There are online trainings and short videos we've shared from the D75 Vimeo page and they're linked on the D75 STEM site, which is also linked in the agenda. And you will find recordings of these that will be out soon as soon as it's overnight, hit stop and we'll make it happen. And what I leave everybody with is this, uh, Yes, my name is Sean Arnold. Uh, feel free to connect with me. Here again is that agenda. Know that there were a lot of things I shared. It will not be perfect every time your first time out. It certainly isn't for me. Don't expect everything to be awesome and perfect, especially in this situation. But always try to do your best and be brave in every attempt that you're doing. And on that note, I want to wish everybody an awesome, awesome Friday and an awesome weekend.